Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback hardware tour of the Dell Streak or the Dell Streak 5. The reason why this is more of a hardware tour than a complete revisited review is because the Dell Streak uses a proprietary charger uh, found on the bottom here that Dell implemented rather you know, poorly, and it also acted as a conversion port for HDMI and USB ports that we no longer have, so it's a bit difficult to power this phone on now seven years later. Regardless, if we take a closer look at the design of this phone, um, it had a 5 inch uh, 480 by 800 resolution display, standard res at the time, but again, not very sharp at all in today's standards. Interestingly enough, back in 2010, this was one of the first phablets that were was released, and it was still considered more of a tablet than a true smartphone, since 5 inches was, quote, too unwieldy, and of course now we have 6 inch phones, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note series, so really this was a precursor to many of these modern day smartphones that we use as a hybrid between a true tablet and a regular phone. So in a way, it was Dell that got it right first with this larger form factor that we are now familiar with here in 2017, although sadly they never did quite well with their other phones and as such no longer create smartphones here in 2017. In terms of specifications, we're talking about the Snapdragon S1 processor, the first generation 1 gigahertz processor cocked by, coupled with a 512 megabytes of RAM. That's the same chipset you found in the HDC HD2, which we did a retro review on a few days ago, and it still powers you know, the HDC pretty well on Windows Mobile. Same can be said with this Android device. Uh, it's going to be more sluggish when you browse the web. For those basic utility programs and navigating the UI, it did a decent job. The Streak, or the Streak 5, at the time only came with Android version 1.6, although an upgrade later brought it to Android version 2.2 Froyo. The interface also saw an overhaul from 1.6 being more similar to a desktop-like experience, since uh, Dell had their skin on the phone that uh, made it really only usable for browsing the web, to you know 2.2 and being more of a familiar Android experience for anyone that's used another Android phone. Otherwise, it's also quite hefty. Uh, it has Corning's Gorilla Glass in the front, some aluminum accents and soft touch rubber materials that made it weigh in at 220 grams or 7.76 ounces. So even compared to modern day phablets, this is definitely on the heavier side of the spectrum, uh, considering again, it only has a five inch screen and not 5.5 inches or even larger. So taking a closer look at the design here, we have access on the front to physical or capacitive keys which are backlit for going back uh, to the menu and also going to the home. The screen here, which is completely flush, gives uh, access to a front-facing one, one megapixel camera for video conferencing next to the earpiece. And if we take a look at the sides of the phone, you can see it's coated in a layer of soft touch rubber that makes it still reasonably slim and easy to grip. Obviously there are a slew of controls which correspond to the camera shutter key for the five megapixel autofocus camera that we'll take a closer look at in a second. There's also access to a lock switch uh, in addition to a volume rocker which is pretty tactile and responsive and a weirdly placed 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that uh, kind of sticks out from the sides as opposed to the top or the bottom of the phone. The sides kind of tapers off just to make it seem slightly smaller and you know back in 2010 this phone was really too large to hold comfortably in one hand since we were still used to phones with 3.5 inch screens and 2.8 inch screens if you guys still remember uh, you know back then even the HD2 with a 4.3 inch screen was considered huge so this device with that 5.5 inch form factor was again considered too large by many but now it's comfortable because we are used to the size on modern day phones there's that proprietary and rather annoying charging data and HDMI cable port uh, proprietary to Dell. And finally on the back there's access to again that 5 megapixel autofocus camera with dual LED flash it kind of acts as a mirror as well, just because of how reflective it is, so you can take self-portraits. Uh, this was also one of the first kind of US phones, uh, or smartphones, with a front-facing camera, which made it quite useful if you had another Android device at the time that could run Skype, so you can do video conferencing with it, just like on a larger tablet. And back then, even the first-gen iPad didn't have a front-facing camera, so this was, again, another unique and leading feature for 2010. Down below here, there was a loudspeaker. It is a stereo speaker 
quicker, but unfortunately it is rear mounted. The device is also made out of a soft touch rubber that makes it easy to grip and puts well on a surface without sliding around. The back plate here is made out of uh, aluminum or metal, so it does feel again quite reassuring. There's access to a removable or swappable battery compartment in addition to access to a full size SIM card slot. It is a GSM quad band phone and there's also access to a micro SD card slot for expanding the built in memory. Other hardware features included the standard array of Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, and of course this is an only a 3G phone since it was released in 2010. One interesting pattern with the Dell Street 5 is its number of accessories that Dell made available, just like with other laptops that they produce, from the port that can connect to a dock, uh, allows you to connect to a monitor and keyboards, almost transforming it into a UMPC, to its cases and other custom accessories that they built for it, uh, which of course would make the entire uh, ecosystem more expensive, but also uh, expanded on the functionality. And this speaks volumes about Dell's design philosophy with the Streak 5. They saw it more as this pocket computer, a pocket tablet, than just a phone. And again, similar to laptops, they made tons of accessories available for it uh, to expand on its features. So you can see that within the case, the logo and uh, the ports are still accessible, in addition to protecting the phone a bit more when you are traveling with it. So if we do a, a quick size comparison, again, as a five inch device, it is quite bulky by 2017 standards, but here's a 5.5 inch phone, the GLTEL Note, and you can see that in terms of dimensions, it's not too far off as far as the overall size and the form factor. So having only a five inch screen and taking up this, this much space, especially with large bezels, makes it similar to a true phablet or a 5.5 inch phone in 2017. Compared to another 5-inch phone, the same display size here, we have the Ficom Passion 660, and you can really tell just how slim and smaller these modern phones are in terms of being a lot easier to grip and hold using just one hand. So anyways, that was a quick look back at the hardware of the Dell Streak or the Dell Streak 5. I think this was an interesting phone just because it was one of the first commercially available phablets that were ever released running on Android. Other than that, Dell's design both in terms of hardware, ports, even the software for, making it seem more like a tablet uh, with smaller icons, fitting more stuff into one screen, using a menu system that's more similar to a desktop than a smartphone, says a lot about how far we've come as far as uh, large screen phones here in 2017. And again, this is one of the more iconic devices, I think, as part of mobile history. So you can check out more details in our throwback article, and if I find the charger or the cable, I might be able to do a bit more with the software in a throwback part two. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This was the Dell Street.